Hello! Welcome everyone to Strange Generations. Uh, we are going to finish out this series four. Uh, I'm going to give this over to Michael real quick, but uh, I always want to make sure that you guys are checking out um, if you're confused on how to play the game or if you are confused on what these characters are up to or what the characters are all about. Check out our playlist. I will say this every single time that we broadcast. Check out our playlists. Um, they are on our YouTube channel, on our Twitch channel. So they don't go away. You don't have to pay for them. They're all free. So you just go in there and check out how to play the game. Uh, watch the ticker at the bottom and give you some ideas of what the dies are all about. Each specific die is about and how we're using them. Uh, and if you have any questions about this stuff, feel free to post it in some chats. Uh, send us a message and we'll help you out the best we can. But if not, you can always go to Kids on Bikes. They got it's. We'll put some links in there in some of the chats for you. So without further ado, we're going to give it right over to Michael. Let's get this on the road. <laughs> All right. Welcome to Strange Generations, a nightmarish journey through the shadows of America, one generation at a time. And this generation, this show is the last of this particular generation. We have been with these characters. This is the second batch of characters we made for this show. And we've seen them as kids, or at least uh, three of them. And we've seen them, we've seen them grow up before our eyes into three messed up adults. Uh, well, I mean, some are more, some have it more together than others. Bizarrely, I think Jordan Mays, our uh, conspiracy theorist who was joking about wearing a tinfoil hat earlier, is the one who has it the most together. We'll talk about it. Um, but this is the final episode of, yeah, series four, uh, the end of our three episode 1970s arc. So. Uh, last time, we left off on a pretty big cliffhanger, and I'll, I'll get to it, and we'll start resolving that and see uh, how things end up for these characters. But first, let's go around, meet the players, meet the characters. Uh, let me know who you are, who you're playing, and how they're feeling as uh, the showdown with Dr. Guru and, uh, and the cult of the Doves of Enlightenment is about to occur. Uh, let's start with Nick. Okay, yeah, that's me. I'm Nick, um, and I'm playing Sean Hackett, the uh, former, I don't remember, what was he? He was he was the loner kid. Now he's the slacker druggie. Was a loner, um, now a stoner. <laughs> among other things. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, um, I think at this point he's just sort of hoping that they can just do what needs to be done without too much trouble mm. well we'll have to uh we'll have to see if what can be done without too much trouble yeah all right uh we are also very happy to be joined by marvin so hi, I'm Marvin, and I'm going to be playing Boy Scout turned conspiracy theorist Jordan Mays. It stems from seeing some things no kid should ever have to see. And he's likely suffering from PTSD, untreated, which kind of goes to how he views life at the moment. No tinfoil hat this time, because I don't really think that would fit Jordan, because he hasn't been wrong about anything. There has been government conspiracies. Aliens literally exist. And now we're trying to stop some fool from something like the biggest evil there is from destroying the world. So who's really crazy here? <laughs> Not this guy. <laughs> very true. Very true. <laughs> uh, we are also very happy to be joined by Cats. Hey, I'm Kat. I'm playing Rosie Walsh, a uh, childhood bully, although she didn't view it that way. Uh, mm. And uh, adult, well, honestly, I just kind of wrote a playbook for her. So a uh, freeform playbook, but let's call her songwriter. Uh, yeah, uh, oh, all of her that. problems in life have been solved by having a lot of money and fame. Go figure. They have not been <laughs> solved. But, you know, uh, 
positive, like ther she's had therapy. She has money. Uh, she's going through a divorce and wrote a big hit album about said divorce with her ex-husband. And, you know, they're touring that. So that's fun for them. Um, you know, like you do. Maybe it's a little bit based off Fleetwood Mac. I don't know. I'm not saying. But at any rate, uh, yeah, she's uh, back in town to take care of her sick mom um, and has uh, wound up back where she started as a kid uh, being ready to shoot him up a licka. Um, <laughs> that is her that is her big plan for uh, uh, Mr. Dr. Professor Guru. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Nice Dr. Little, Professor Guru. Yeah, nice little yeah. bullet through his uh, right into the uh, temporal lobe, as it were. Right, and I think we're going to pick up with that uh, as soon as the game starts. Yeah, uh, we'll do a real quick recap though before the uh, before the triggers can be pulled. Yeah, so uh, far so far she's solved one problem with a Molotov cocktail, and she's about to try to solve another problem with a handgun. Like I said, well, I really falling see. back to who she was as a kid. Oh yes, I can certainly see that. All right, and also rounding us out, we're super happy he's here. It is Dallas. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Dallas, and uh, <clears throat> finishing off this one with Carl Harris, uh, Hired Gun, um, kind of also a tweaked playbook on certain things for that, um, and uh, just uh, almost thinks he's done with you know what he's doing here, but then things get really strange, and now he's in the middle of the woods at night, I think middle of winter as well. Oh, it's Christmas um, Eve. It's about to be Christmas. Christmas. Yes, yes. So, like, you know, it's pretty pretty cold. So uh, he's there to make sure he sees what happens, you know, through with the eye of a Braxis. But, um, yeah, this is one he'll definitely never forget. All the nightmares that he has of all the other people he has to try to, try to drown out. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to work for this one. Hmm. Yes. Oh, and I, I would say, I should say this, it is like, by now, like enough time has passed, it is Christmas, if, even if uh, the dawn doesn't come just yet. So, um, we'll have that in mind, and uh, let's do a real quick kind of recap here, and then we'll begin, pick up right where we left off. Oh, and I should say, like, creating those custom playbooks, we're using Kids on Bikes, which does offer a bunch of playbooks to choose from. But the game is, what I love about Kids on Bikes is that you can easily make your own. So uh, that's like a totally okay thing to do. And uh, it's really cool to see these uh, these custom playbooks in action. All right. Christmas morning is only a few hours away. But it's been a long night. And it will be longer still until the dawn comes. Three childhood friends and one out-of-town gangland enforcer now find themselves facing off. Well, friends, you know, what I'm close enough. Close friends, friends adjacent. Find themselves facing off with a bizarre mystical cult and its charismatic leader, who is about to fuse forever, forever with the unknowable alien deity known as Abraxas. Rosie Walsh, a renowned singer-songwriter, Carl Harris, a New York mob gunman, Sean Hackett, a good-natured stoner, and Jordan Mays, a rightfully paranoid conspiracy theorist, find themselves caught in the standoff between the New Age cult known as the Doves of Enlightenment and a corrupt gang of new hooked and cops under the control of Captain Friendly Fred Frankowski. Now, they're hidden in the tree line just outside the Doves compound of the Covey, with the police closing in. Oren McIntosh, a.k.a. Dr. Guru, has declared the doves have only one path forward, sacrifice. The fire glows green. It is time for the ritual to commence. All right, so as Dr. Guru kind of finishes his speech, that fire is glowing green, and you see something that we have nothing really supernatural so to speak, has occurred so far this whole game. But now something supernatural is happening. These green tendrils start seeping out of the mouths, eyes, and noses of uh, of the doves, including the little kid, uh, young Bablo Singh, the eight-year-old messiah, who is next to Dr. Guru. 
and all of these these green strands this ethereal uh almost like the misty breath that comes out in the cold is floating up and floating into dr guru all the while that fire the bonfire in the center of the campment is just dancing and rushing higher and higher so what do you guys do it's all happening very fast too like we're shoot him okay <laughs> rosie's so rosie uh has a it's been a been a week you have like a pistol we had a yes yeah she's well, got her dirty of, uh, hairy 44 magnum it's the most powerful handgun in the world it can blow his head clean off <laughs> oh man all right this sounds like a fight roll so what? right as this weird since phenomenon occurs rosie fires the handgun what I got happened? a 10. E. Okay. I think it's not a kill shot, but it's like a mortally wounding shot. I so, like the idea of this stuff starting to rush into him and it's just bang. Yes. Rosie, Rosie's like, I can't stand this freaky shit. <laughs> <laughs> he is blasted. Where do you think you hit him? Uh, and I mean, um, not a headshot, but... Obviously, it's not headshot. I want to say it like hit him like pretty square, like in a place that he's gonna die pretty soon from the shot. It's probably a good body shot that like maybe knocks, takes him a bit off his feet. Definitely, like a center mass kind of. Yeah, I figure if it's not an instant kill shot, it's probably a center mass shot. Oh yeah. With like a a gun that really is best for like killing an elephant, not shooting a person. <laughs> yeah, it like um. It like rips right through him, like it tears apart his kind of a safari shirt he's wearing. Um, huge wound, humongous spurt of blood uh, courses out onto the snow. Um, he stumbles, he like drops down to his knees. He looks up and he like just sort of glares at where you guys are. And you can hear him like muttering some command. And then he dives into the bonfire. At his command, the Hawks, which were the security force for the Doves, there's about four of them maybe armed with like automatic rifles. They start swinging over to where you guys are, are hidden, and they're going to open fire. So what is happening now? Um, we have several guns firing at us, and I think we only have three guns among us. So... So any plans? I mean, I already declared what Rosie was doing. I don't think I need to <laughs> declare a second thing. Like she just so, shot him. I'm waiting. Um, yeah, I mean, you are you are in the woods. There's lots of cover around. I was about to say, yeah, I drop literally, um, and then just take aim at the closest one or two if I can. But um, I literally go to the floor. Have we okay. seen the eye anywhere? Um, as far as you can see, no, but you are a little bit away from the camp. Okay. Um, I would, I would like to use unassuming and sort of get around, get like, make it so that I, I'm not seen by the, the Hawks and then sort of find my way closer and see if I can find the, find the eye. Ooh. Okay. So unassuming is that, let me check the, uh, that is, I can spend Two adversity tokens to not be seen within reason. Ooh, okay, cool. Yes, love those kids on bike special moves. Okay. Yes. Um, all right, so go ahead and spend those. You slip in. No need to roll for that. Mm -hmm. uh, Carl, give me a grit roll to see how you do there. There we go. Uh, four plus one is so five. Okay, I think they're far enough away so you don't you don't get shot. Uh, maybe in the force of hurling yourself down, you kind of like fall over on a root. So you get a little bit, you get a little bit of maybe a bruise, bump on the arm. Okay. What kind? What kind of minor injury that could maybe mess you up later? Do you think you uh, you obtained there? Oh no, that. That makes sense. I was going to say either like an ankle, an ankle sounds about right getting caught, or if I went, if I dove down like my wrist, you know, too, too rough of a landing than the wrist. Yeah, not not sprained or broken or anything, but like it's a little, you know, it's a bruise there. Gotcha. 
but at least you are safe. Um, the gunshots go for a little bit more. Jordan, what are you doing? The question, what does intuitive do again? Or is it intuitive uh, or intuition? Up. It's a, a question you can ask about surroundings or um, Yeah, I think NPCs. you have to spend an adversity, one adversity token yeah. or two? Just one. one. You're right. Oh, cool. Because I, I have exactly this. one. Okay, so you're going to spend it to ask me a question? I should have them all here. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Um, okay, so what, what question are you asking? And I will answer it honestly. Okay. What strange things are happening with that bonfire Heath went into? Okay. The doctor went into. Right. Uh, so you can, like, you peer through that bonfire, and you can see that he is, he's in there. He's like silhouetted by the flames, but he is not burning. Some sort of weird transformation is going on there. Oh boy. And I quickly point this out to everyone. Guys, I think he's not dead. In fact, I think he's becoming more than just not dead. He's becoming something else. Uh, so yes, okay. shoot him Rosie? again if you can. <laughs> sure. So, uh, Remember that Rosie, I had specified in the last game, she's camouflaged up like before <laughs> she came out here because she was intending the entire time to kill this man. Yes. Uh, I remember you guys hit up a army surplus store on Christmas Eve. Yep. Got all their discounts. Yep. So she is camoed like to, to ungodly amounts. So after she shot him, she tried to duck behind a tree to, you know, okay. not be seen. Right. Uh, will be a good role for this. Cause it's not. Maybe Could be flight. Yeah, flight seems to make the most sense. I agree. It's not her best, but it's not her worst. And it rolled a five. Okay. Um. You you think you're well hidden, but you might not totally be. It's fine. I feel like I put my thumb on it a little bit with the whole camouflage thing. Cause like I said, she was expecting at some point people would be trying to shoot her in the woods. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so, a fair assumption. We're going after a armed woods dwelling cult. Yeah. So uh, is that an adversity token or no? I would say it's not a total failure. So no adversity okay. token. It's a, you know, okay. mixed success. Gotcha. So she's not going to instantly get pasted this round. Oh, hundred percent. No, no, no. Okay, but you're, you're for it. prepared moment. for it. All right, so uh, after a little while, the shooting stops. You can see the hawks who are, you know, they're dressed in more more brown robes and the white robes of the doves. Uh, they just kind of like their rifles kind of fall to their sides. Uh, they're still holding them, but they're just sort of like, well, not uselessly. They're, they're, they've gone uh, motionless. Just holding the rifles at their side. They're kind of like staring around in a daze. And they have ceased fire completely. Okay. That's when I take careful aim and shoot when I have the opportunity. Okay. Are you killing the hawks or what, what, what are you shooting at here? Yeah, because they shot at me. So... Um, Whoa, all right. I, I'm going to take a chance. That's my training. They okay, put the makes weapon sense. down. So. All right, go ahead and give me a fight roll. Not a very hard one. <laughs> oh, boy, that's a four. Mm. Okay. Um. Let me see. I mean... I did get injured. It makes sense, I guess, on the roll. <laughs> Yeah. So. All right. Let's say this. You. It's not hard. You, you, you hit them. I mean, they're like, a, they're not taking cover. They're not moving at all. They're total. Still target. It's like shooting a can on a fence post. Um. But still, your arm was a little bit off. So you like kind of gruesomely like plow through this guy's cheek. You take out a lot of teeth and uh, muscle there. He reels to the side. He doesn't scream. He is still totally still. 
and he kind of falls next to the fire, which then starts to shift and bulge and move. And Dr. Guru, still bearing the injury from Rosie's pistol, rises up out of the flames. The fire is like wreathing him, but you don't see any burn marks on his body. It's covering him like some bizarre suit, and you can make out his features, his clothing, all under this green fire. All right, I'll just say we're as closest if I have to maybe yell. Just uh, you probably know what to do with that thing. I will keep an eye on these uh, three. Best of my ability. Okay, I've, I've I'm guessing that I've sort of like made my way closer and sort of I'm looking around for for the eye a, a book that he may have gotten the ritual from anything that I can find to see if I can disrupt whatever is happening hmm. okay Sean give me a brains roll that's a 10 which is uh, an explosion mm, okay. on anything so Plus another nine, plus the one for being an adult, so 20. Okay. You don't find you don't find anything with your eyes, unless you count your third eye. You I hear open that third eye, man. <laughs> yeah. You hear a strange, oddly familiar voice in your head. Being like, um, Sean? Sean, you gotta. You're gonna have to follow him, friend. Follow. You're gonna have to chase after him. And with that, you see Dr. Guru, he rears out of the fire. He's uh, levitating a little bit, and he starts flying further into the woods. Oh, Rosie. Before he's gone very far, I wanted to shoot him again. All right, excellent. Go ahead and roll fight. And in fact, when Carl says, like, I think that you guys know how to handle this more than I do, she goes, I don't know shit about shit. And then shoots him. Not not Carl, but Dr. Guru. Mm-hmm. It's cocked. And there's a one. Probably because he's, like, freaking super powered. Oh, yeah. Man. Well, give yourself an adversity token. Yeah. I get two adversity tokens because I'm technically easygoing. Mm. All right, so let's say this. Because you rolled kind of a mixed success earlier, maybe that ties into this. Even though he's not looking at you, you have the sensation of being watched. You realize he's seen you. And then the tree you were hiding behind, one of those uh, branches wraps around uh, your like upper body and like neck and arms and starts hauling you up Python style trying to squeeze the life out of you. And I mean, that messes up your shot for sure. Yeah. And Dr. Guru like flies his way into the woods. Can I take a picture of him as he flies off? Oh yeah. I just want to document all of this, prove I'm not crazy. Yeah, you, quick, you quickly snap a shot. It's going to be a little blurry, but you'll have something to show for it at least. Eh, I think people will be able to tell what that is, hopefully. <laughs> All right, so let's check in with uh, with Carl. So right now, Rosie is being strangled by this tree. Okay, so if there's no other opposition... Um... Yeah, nobody's shooting at you. The hawks are still um, frozen. The guy with part of his face blown away is just kind of like standing there, bleeding. Okay, I'm in total disbelief at that. Um, like, my brain is trying to wrap its head around, but what's going on and you know over here is uh what's needed so i'll do my best to if i can uh take aim at the vine uh you know above her not the ones that are like wrapped around her literally you know okay. the ones that are like holding it from hope above. you don't roll a one and shoot rusty instead uh, i hope not either but i uh, all right i don't know if i would have any of that happen with a one let's, let's see we'll see we'll see yeah, I just wouldn't be the type thinking, to 
to have anything else. Like, what's the worst outcome when you when you when you guys do these things? It does seem oh. like he's very purposefully I, trying to aim away from Rosie. Yeah, oh, yeah. just because you know I know things are wrapped around you, but I want to hit the part that it's connecting to that. You know, so and I don't have an adversity token, so it won't be a one no matter what. <laughs> All right, let's roll. Let's roll fight to shoot the tree. It's a two with the adversity token added onto. I'm gonna make it a three. Okay, um, it's a failure, but it's not a shoot Rosie failure. Oh my god. It's not you the worst blast into the done, tree, you give her a little bit of breathing room, but the tree's pretty intact. All this talk about ones, we got so close. All right. <laughs> Oof, I know, Jenna jinxed it. Okay, um, let's see. Jordan, I know you took a picture, but we haven't really given you uh, an action kind of turn. What, what, what do you think you would do in this right now as the tree is choking your friend and everybody else has gone? All the, uh, all the doves have gone. Slack jawed and frozen. Hmm. Let's see. Sean's going after the eye. That guy ran off. Rosie's currently being choked by a tree. And briefly forgot that was this character. Carl? All right. And Carl is currently yeah, so trying to shoot it. the vine to get Rosie down. I oh. think it, I think everyone's gotten everything like handled, so <laughs> Whoa, all right. Well, honestly, if Carl can get her down, Sean's going after the eye. I'm going to follow the good doctor and see where he's gone. Mm. Okay. Um, He's not really leaving footprints, but there is a trail. He's like, you know, pushing branches aside. Mm -hmm. Leaves, pine needles have fallen down. Uh, why don't you give me a brains roll? Yeah, put that scout training to use and see if we can find the guy. Uh, Sean uh, said sent a good thing in the chat there. Mm -hmm. Leave the stoner hearing voice to take care of the ultra's nation. Well, yeah, I mean, he is the best fit for it. <laughs> but anyways, I rolled a 14 plus one, 15 altogether. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's really solid. You were able to like see the trail he's making pretty clearly. He's gone a little bit faster. He's gone ahead of you. But you're pretty sure you can follow him without a problem. And where is he headed? Mm. All right, well, we'll catch back to that. Uh, so, Sean. Yep. Uh, this voice says... I've done this before. I can help your friend. You just have to ask. Like you did before. Wait. Before. Do I have to make like a roll to see if I recognize who this is? Oh, I think not. I think at this point you can see them kind of like floating down amongst the trees, the outline of them. It is Charlie. Charlie. I'm I'm not seeing things, am I, Charlie? Uh, Charlie's like, well, I'm here and I'm not here. Maybe the others can see me after a little while, but uh, just consider me your imaginary friend for the moment. Well, not okay. Um, think you could help out with Rosie? I know you've done something similar. Okay, that was a you while want me ago. To. I think that I've got the energy. Yeah, that'd probably be good. It's probably the best thing that I've done to with Rosie since childhood. Actually, yeah. Probably best. Make up for all the shit that I did as a kid. <laughs> hmm. He says, okay, just hold out your hand. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so you hold out your hand and you like... Charlie is like holding your hand mm -hmm. and then floats away from you and floats over to the tree with a wave of his arms and uh, one psychic energy token spent, giving him only six out of seven right now. The tree, because one of his powers was to control vegetation. Mm -hmm. The tree lets go of Rosie and she plops back down to the snow. Some bruises, but definitely still intact. 
And uh, right now, Sean's the only one who can see Charlie. So it looks kind of like <laughs> he just held out his hand and the tree uh, let Rosie go. Okay. So I guess if if I'm sort of like... If they can see and hear me, I'd just be like, we need to follow him. <laughs> Okay, and, and I Carl, will start you, you heading towards. Up. Yeah, yeah. Again, in disbelief, like if you could do that, yeah, let's go, let's let's go. That I wasn't me. You, I just saw you wave your hand, right? And then, that wasn't me. <laughs> it's an old friend. For her, part, Jordan, Rosie's you're the. Gonna, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Rosie. So for her part, Rosie's going to land in a combat role and then just instantly take off after the puppet of Abraxas. Okay, so you catch up to Jordan. Um, while that's going on, yeah, Jordan's like at the edge, <laughs> at yep. the edge of the like uh, the covey starting to follow the trail. You guys all catch up. Oh, As you guys really? are heading out, something else happens. Oh, really quickly though? Yeah, go uh, ahead. How far away are all of those machine guns? <laughs> oh, that the uh, the hawks were holding? Yeah, yeah. You can definitely grab one. They're like, yes. you know, in, uh, they're in a stupor, so they will not, like you just pull it out of their hands. They do nothing. Well, ho, 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 now I have a machine gun. <laughs> uh, our classic Christmas, just in time for Christmas. Got the line a little backwards, but. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in our game, it's Christmas because we started like in like late December. So uh, it, it all works out. <laughs> all right. So you have like an, uh, an AK-47 or so with, you know, the full banana clip there. All right. And as you guys all start going, uh, this happens. The doves stand or squat, frozen, their eyes blank. Some of them stumble in little circles or walk in place. A shuffle that a sleepwalker would outpace. Little Bablo Singh, the young messiah of the doves of enlightenment, sits on the ground in a parody of meditation, while Heller slumps down amongst the pillows and carpets in the gazebo. None respond as a helicopter hums overhead and casts a harsh glare down in the torches and Christmas lights. All right, you lousy hippies. This is Mayor Orsini. You're done, you hear me? You're done. I just got a batch of explosives from the FBI. We're going to drop it on you unless you walk out of those woods and surrender. All right, goodbye and Merry Christmas. And the helicopter like buzzes its way back over the forest. Well, shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, oh, go ahead, Rosie. Were you, uh... uh, yeah, she'll say something to everybody else really quickly, I think. Yeah. Look, I don't want any of these people to die, but equally, like, I don't want that creepo to get away. I've never been very good at fighting anything supernatural. I think that that's known. So I'm going to go talk to the cops, try to, like, get them to help evacuate this place rather than bombing a bunch of innocent people. Well, uh, good luck on saving the world, I guess. Hmm. Uh, Sean, Charlie says, I think can need all hands on deck for this one, Captain. And if you can do it, and also, these people will not move until... What's happening to them stops. Okay. So I will just be like, so, you know, our friend Charlie, uh, he's here, but not here. Um, I know That's that sounds, me. I know that sounds like weird, like stoner shit. This is actually happening. <laughs> so, and he's saying that we all, we need everyone. So Rosie, I need you to come with me as well. Yeah, all right. And Charlie's like, aces. <laughs> all right. Well, Sean, it's swelled to be, it's swelled to be back with you here. Uh, but yeah, these people, like their souls, they're all tangled up with, uh, with the good doctor. So they can't move at all unless uh, he's taken care of. Oh. 
All right, so they they're not going anywhere. Um, yeah, yeah. That looks like makes you guys sense. got a bit of a timetable. So we do. Yeah, we better hurry. <laughs> All right. Hey, is that Jordan over there? I think he's picked up the scent. That he has. He's been, been, it's been nothing. All right. He would really like to see you. I'm sure. <laughs> okay, buddy. I'll try my best to uh, to manifest, but it might take a little while. All right. I'm guessing while this one-way conversation is happening, the rest <laughs> of us are moving, right? <laughs> Again. Yeah, I would say hey. so. You're all kind of like on the trail. <laughs> just guessing that Sean does that. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he's, just, he's one of those guys that talks to himself every so often. Yep. Okay. Um, let me see. Jordan, you were, you were the yep. first like on the trail, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're and you you rolled really well, so you're like following it. Um, you like kind of weave through the trees, and hmm. after a little while, you uh you come to something that like wasn't there before. You sort of like you know you you br- you're bursting your way through the underbrush. You look up ahead, and then uh, as your friends kind of get together, you see this. A new structure stands in the woods. It wasn't there before. You would have seen the outline. But now, you take another step through the snow, and there it is. A great mass of jagged obsidian stone with a greenish oil slick sheen to it. It looks like a cubist nightmare. No line is curved. The squares connect and form dizzying towers and battlements, reaching up to the starry sky. The wrongness of the structure hits you like a blow to the gut. It shouldn't be standing in the way it is. It shouldn't even be there. But the door is open and a green light flashes inside, bright over the snow. It wants you to come in. (gasps) All right, you snap a quick (laughs) photo. I think while you're doing that, everybody else like makes their way down the trail and joins you. And you all see this... uh, this structure that like it doesn't make sense you should have seen the outline uh you know and the tower is way before you got here but it's just there it wants us to go in i'm gonna so this looks like the kind come. of crap that my friend hr designs yeah all right <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah oh definitely but we know he went in there and the only way we're going to stop them from bombing all of those innocent... Are they innocent people? I kind of forgot if they were. They're about as innocent as they come. They're dumb enough to have joined a cult, which makes them pretty innocent. Yeah. To save those innocent people, we have to go in there. Yep. Hey, uh, you guys got explosives, right? Oh, of course. What do you... It, did you <laughs> not? It's me. I don't carry explosives. Well, you damn well should. I make love, Should not he? war. I don't no, know. My grand uncle always told me, always have explosives, because you never know when you have to fight great terrors from beyond the void. I mean, look, Rosie's already moving into the structure, because okay. those, those cops aren't going to wait forever to start just dropping bombs on people, so. Oh, of course. I thought yeah. we were going in anyways. Oh. Yeah, you can have like, you're talking as you head inside. Uh, a West Wing style walk and talk. Mm-hmm. Yep. Chill. All right. So you guys walk inside, and um, Carl, I gotta ask. Um, I know your character is uh, is an addict. Mm-hmm. Um, is there a particular place where you usually like um, uh, shoot up? Uh, you, you mean like location wise, or like myself? um location wise like you just oh, I, mean, I guess you I have mean, an apartment you just kind of yeah. like head to your yeah, room exactly and, uh, usually uh usually make sure that i'm you know home safe uh you know everything is locked up uh, um put the music on and yeah try to get rid of the nightmares okay well um as you guys all walk in we are in your bedroom what the yeah you're you're there it's got um I mean, Carl, how, how do you think you furnished your bedroom? Think, is Carl like, oh, Rosie? Just him 
or are all of us in his bedroom? Uh, everybody is. Okay. Oh man. Uh, yeah, probably like an instant, like shock goes over me. Uh, you probably all know the feeling, uh, literal, like maybe cold sweat starts because I, I'm not in my apartment. I know I'm not in my apartment, but you would see like uh, a real simple um, metal framed bed, um, nightstand with like a lamp, uh, a clock on it, um, uh, maybe a little like, uh, you know, uh, trash pieces or like uh, remnants of the night before. Um, dresser, you know, like real simple, like real simple stuff. Maybe like mm -hmm. one, one, uh, bottle of cologne on it, you know, like one comb. Um, oh man, uh, not the, even like a hang in there, a cat poster, just <laughs> kind of bare walls. Yeah, like super, um, anything anything like that would probably be downstairs, but the bedroom is like super, just super bare. Right. I mean, it makes and then, sense. And then like the record player. Like a Spartan. The, yeah, the record player would be over by the, uh, on the dresser and stuff, so. All right, you've got a, You've got the tune that you usually use when you're like, um, when you're getting in the mood for it going, and um, you start you start jonesing really bad. Like it's been, I think it's been a little while since um, since you've done it. Gotcha. So the yeah okay so this you literally see beads of sweat then. Yeah, but now it's like it's way worse than it's ever been. Oh, I'm sick. Need it okay. Hit like right now, and in fact, you see right there on the bed your kit. Uh, is is like waiting for you. You got like the um, belt, the needle, it's all there. Um. Uh, I started like literally like uh, uh, uh and like kind of like walk over, and you see me like scratching kind of a little bit, and like um, but I put my gun in my holster, and uh, wait, like we, we could we could we, you, you can go you can go on, and we we could, we could, or I could take a break. Um, it won't take won't take more than a minute. Huh. Would any of us recognize withdrawal symptoms? And I just start going over towards it. Oh, I think uh, Rosie definitely would. Spend some time in Berlin with Iggy and David. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, Jordan. Do you think you would? Uh, you you would hang out around a lot of um, a lot of addicts, people who are like struggling with that. No, it's just uh, I don't know the symptoms he's showing. Medical okay. knowledge wise, I mean, Sean, Sean probably would. I don't know if Sean's ever gone for like the harder stuff, but I'm sure he's got associates who have, who have gone there. I think the hardest and, he's gone uh, is acid. Hmm? The hardest he, Sean's gone is acid. Yeah, so I would say Sean Rosie probably don't have to roll to know what's going on. Maybe Jordan does. Mm -hmm. Maybe like brains if you want to. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, and he's he's going at it like never 13. before. So yeah. not even rolling. Okay, up yeah, you figure it out, Jordan. Um before he gets to it, Rosie's gonna try to do stupid things, if that's at all possible. All right, go ahead, Rosie. Uh Rosie's gonna take out a cherry bomb and whip it out the works. Ooh. Okay. Not in any way as to hurt Carl, but just in enough to like get him to get oh, the hell away from it. Ooh, okay. Um, let's do this. Carl, give me give me a grit roll, and we'll see if this this like explosion is able to like distract you. Six, four plus one. That's a solid on these six. Yeah, all right. So five. Five. Okay. With that, you're able to hold it at bay. Like the flashing goes over, you realize like the um, what's the, the the physical sparks like don't fall down on the things the way should the way they should. You okay, can see so sparks like I'm, falling and hissing on just empty space, which they should not. Gotcha. So initially, I'm like, "Why would you do that?" and freak, and then all of a sudden realize, "What the hell is going on?" Carl, I don't know what's in that needle for real, but it ain't gonna be skag. I could have sworn it was right there. Just, uh, I couldn't mm -hmm. think of anything else. Don't believe no. what you're seeing. Yeah, this is some ending of 2001 A Space Odyssey crap going on up in here. 
We are not in our world. We are in some kind of alternate dimension from the looks of it. Designed to look like places familiar to us. Well, at this point, uh, the bedroom door opens. Maybe the bathroom, and then the bathroom door opens. I'm going to say you have two rooms, two doors in your apartment, in your uh, bedroom, Carl. And Rosie, through one of those doors, you hear a uh, piano playing, which is extremely familiar. H- how, how would you say your dad played piano? I mean, he was a jazz player, which is another reason why she knows what heroin looks like, because he was a heroin addict to be. Oh, school. yeah. I, I, yeah. If mm-hmm. you remember, that was part of it. So. Right. Um, I know he did have his fingers uh, broken because some unpaid mafia debts. Yeah, he was a he was kind of a, a bebop player. So. All right. You know, well, kind you of hear like, his. Um, um, oh, go ahead. Late forties, early fifties style of bebop. Okay, you you hear that in the in the next room. And as you peer through, you see your dad, like, back before he was, uh, you know, attacked and hurt. And then, like, left. Just as you remember him in your, uh, I guess, you know, living room. You know, where, where he would play. And he's on, you know, he's at the he's at that uh, that piano. Well, maybe, maybe not the best. Um, why am I I'm blanking on the... Names of all those great piano brands. Steinman, Steinbach, I don't know. I mean, I'd imagine the apartment they have the best one had would be like an Steinway, apartment. that's it. Yes, thank you. Like they didn't have a baby grand in that apartment. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, he's he's tickling the ivories over there. And he looks back and sees you and he's like, Rosie, come over here. Sit next to me. You can, you can join in. You've always got a part to play. It's cute. She looks She looks around in the air. I'll give you that. It's cute. You know me. Mm. Hey, Dad. Ah, Rosie. You think this is just a dream? I don't think that you raised an idiot, Dad, you know? Now, yeah, keep in mind, she just addressed this thing as dad, despite the fact that she said she's <laughs> saying what she's saying. And he's like, hey, you're right. You got to figure it out. It's just a dream. Uh, but that said, it's nice to spend some time in a dream now and then. So why don't you sit with me? We can do some, uh, we can do chopsticks just like the old times. I'm going to, so that I'm not met. I feel like this would be a temptation for her, so I'm actually going to roll. You don't have to give me an adversity token if you don't want to, but I'll roll probably grit for this. Yeah, I think grit is to overcome this. And then, Jordan, you see something from the other room. Well, we'll get back to you in a second, though. Hmm. Yeah, that's a three altogether on the grit. Okay. Uh, You were going to go and join your father there. I mean, you know know this isn't real, but still. I'll I'll take it. Should I take adversity tokens or no? Uh, Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, And then as soon as she's gone, Carl, you also realize like it might not be real, but you know, hey, the the joy you get from um, from when that when that gold flows through your veins that might not be real either, but it feels so good. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, no. All right, Jordan. He's not uh, going so, back for it, is he? Hmm. So in the other, the door the other opens, you hear, um, like, applause. And as you peer through, you realize it's like um, a, uh, one of those, it's like a, you know, kind of nighttime talk show. You got like Johnny Carson. Is that too? Is that too old or too? Johnny Carson, Johnny Carson. would be right on for a late seventies. Right, mm. I was thinking that. Yeah, so it's like Carson and Carl Sagan, who I believe was always on Carson, mm-hmm. kind of how he got his start, hanging out there, and you hear, you know, the announcer being like, 
and the man who proved to the world the existence of aliens, Jordan Mays. And they're like beckoning Eve to get out. You know, the house band's playing some that zippy song they always do when a guest arrives. Jordan, don't go through that door. You know that it's not going to be what you think. Oh, I know that. It's going to happen in the future, but right now it's kind of a, well, one of those last temptation kind of things. <laughs> Jordan, I think I might have you roll grit. See if you can resist this. All right. And grit for me is D8. Not going to be an easy roll. Six all together. A six. Okay. I'm going to say it's a mixed success. Mm -hmm. You. So you're pretty sure it's not real, but you still want to like see what it is exactly. And hey, there might be a way to defeat Dr. Guru through here. And with that, I'll say to Sean, I know it's not real, but where else do we have to go? Maybe I'll find an opening here. We need to be together for this, man. We already lost the other two, Sean. Come on. Fuck. <laughs> All right, what you got for me? Well, it's as you're really sitting good. there, you see um, Charlie once again appears in front of you. And he's like, Sean, you are unique amongst your friends. Apparently. You... Okay, we'll check back with uh, we'll check back with Carl, Rosie, and Jordan just a little bit here. Um, Charlie says they have lived lives where they've have they've lived lives that have dug holes inside of them. But you, you've done what you wanted. You seem, even if you don't believe it, but you seem to be in a pretty okay place. Maybe that's why you're the only one who can see me. Or maybe it's because you've, uh, you know, manipulated your brain with so many kooky substances. Probably yeah. more likely that. Hey, <laughs> you know, you, you've expanded your neural pathways in such a way that uh, I'm able to, to make sure there's that... Uh, Dr. Guru hasn't cooked up any anything bad for you, my friend. All right. It's pretty good because if you were, uh, if he got into your brain like this, I don't know what we'd do. <laughs> uh, depends on if he accesses the nightmares or the psychedelic. Okay. Well, don't give him any ideas. Right then. The, uh, and speaking of the psychedelic, take my hand. Sure. If you have a solution to all of this. We're going to go, you're going to have a little look at the heart of Abraxas. Great. And we're going to see if you can save your friends. Great. So we are going to step into my nightmares. Uh, I mean, I guess it's everyone's nightmares. Hold on, man. <laughs> oh, he went a little 60s there. It's supposed to be he was, uh, his his experience or their experience in the 50s has um, totally has given him that kind of uh, gee whiz attitude. Um, and with that, you are like, you're swept away. You vanish from this place. You are floating through like a field of stars. You're at like, you know, the edge of the universe. And you can see this like a, a solar system that you're staring at. A, in like the, but in the place of a sun, there's a bulging, pulsating, greenish black oil slick orb. Charlie's like, you see that? That's Abraxas. See, now this is something that Jordan would love to see. Well, not many people can. <laughs> oh, sorry, Jordan. Not many people can without going uh, totally bug house. Uh, yeah, you got, you got me there. Thankfully, you've already, uh, your brain has already <laughs> been worked over by all those great substances <laughs> you've enjoyed. I guess that's one positive about it. Uh-huh. Anyway. 
bits and pieces of it through the eye of Abraxas are melding with the good Dr. Guru. That's how he's able to do this. You can get your friends, and he's he's pulling your he's working on your friends too. He's pulling bits and pieces of them out. <laughs> Roy, Roy sent an amazing comment there. <laughs> he says, "I'll guide you back, and you got my powers. You got to find some way to get your friends out of this, and then we got to take on Doctor Guru together, just like old times." Hmm. Okay. All right, hold tight. We're going back. All right. And uh, you start spinning back through the cosmos, flying all the way back to the Milky Way, to Earth, and to uh, this weird structure, the Palace of Abraxas, there in the uh, in the Phil in the Pennsylvania forests. Mm -hmm. And you flash back into your into your body. Okay. So. And uh, this time you're in. Let's see. What do we got here? I think you're in... I think you're still in... Um, I'm going to say you're actually in the uh, the priest's office of... Um, I don't want to say Callahan. The good, the good reverend, yeah. What's, what was that? Father Kelly. Father Kelly, that's it. Yes. So Father Kelly, I know it's not not Reverend too. Well. <laughs> should be. Yes. Uh the one who I was, you know, like nice. Could be to the you. Reverend Father. The yeah, Reverend Father, be. that's it. Yes. Yes. The one who was nice to you kind of taught you about things. Mm -hmm. Uh so it's pretty weird to be back here. I don't know if you visited the, that church that often. Mm. Probably not too much. Not recently. Yeah. So it's a weird scene from your boyhood, uh, but it is empty, and you can see through the doors, the uh, you know the light, and each of the doors opens up to reveal either Carl's apartment, Rosie's dad's living room, or uh, Johnny Carson's studio audience. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll pop back to you in a second, um, Carl. What is going on with you? Uh, if I haven't snapped out of it completely, I'm thinking there's a chance I can scrape some stuff together off the floor. Um, if if I did kind of snap back to reality, I would probably kick down the next door possible or do something like that to um, get the drop on something or, or whatever I can um, make an assessment. But I'm not sure if I can see and hear what other people are seeing mm, hearing, you know. okay why don't you give me a grit roll okay two plus one is three mm, okay you're pretty trapped into it okay all right uh all right so yeah i'm i'm probably on my on my knees on the ground going yeah, yeah, yeah. no 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 yep this is enough this is enough gain okay. adversity yeah oh yeah mark give yourself an adversity token uh, I had a quick request for a listing of Charlie's powers, because I know it's been a little while since he showed up. Uh, but you can find... I'm just swinging through my notes right here. I know that I controlled his ability to heal people, so that's one of his powers. Oh, yes, yeah, he's got manipulation. control technology telepathically, heal by touching, move objects with their minds and the plant control that we talked about earlier. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and put yes. it all in the chat too. If you, uh, cool. so it says a little record of it there. Cool. Cool. There we are. Yeah. All in the chat. Okay. So yeah, Sorry, Carl, you think you, um, you go ahead and, uh, find a vein. Yep. If I think there's enough, then I, I probably start, uh, leaning up against sitting down on my butt, you know, leaning up against, the, the dresser and um, making myself comfortable. Yeah, and it's it's good. It's like you know, first time good. Like it's it's the kind of thing that like you you didn't think you would ever get again. It's like it's it's perfect. Um. Okay. Yep. I'm gone. <laughs> I'm gone. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Uh, so Rosie, you and your dad are sitting there. Are are you doing chopsticks? I'm thinking of like you no, know the she's classic. Not doing chopsticks. Yeah. What's that, so, Rosie? She's not doing chopsticks. I'll tell yeah. you what she does do. Okay. She's like, look, I know you're not really real, but I want whatever it is that's doing this to hear this. This is a song I always play when I think about you. And she starts playing Dream a Little Dream of Me on the piano. So that's that's what I play whenever I think about you, Dad. Even though I know you ain't really here. Mm. What I don't understand about this Abraxas, and maybe I'm talking to it, and maybe I'm talking to Dr. Guru, I don't really know. I put out so much stuff trying to get its attention all these years. Codes in my albums, a whole album dedicated to my experience with it, trying to get it to pay attention to me. And then I just stumble back on it again in my hometown where I should have been looking for it this whole time. And I find out it picks an idiot, like this Dr. Guru, like some, some little podunk guy with a complex. Now I ask you, what's the logic in that? I have hmm. the ears of the whole world listening to me and it picks him. Sometimes there isn't any justice. Your dad says, well, that's uh, always been my opinion, honey. But uh, let me ask you this. What what makes you think that it's Abraxas who is doing this to you and not Dr. Guru? Because uh, Dr. Guru doesn't know this stuff about me. Well, if I recall, you had an experience when you were young where you saw something that really frightened you. Yeah. It asked yeah, me. a nightmare it... held in a in those chemicals. Yeah, well, Dr. A... Guru, he experienced the same thing. They experimented on him when he was in prison. A lot of other prisoners went through it, too. Hmm. Uh, and right now, what he's given to you, what he's going to give to the whole world, it's not a nightmare. It's a dream. Yeah, well, here's the thing about the whole wide world, Dad. I hate it. I've always hated it. And the thing is, when I had the opportunity when I was a little kid to do the right thing, even remotely the right thing, I didn't take it. When I met that monster the first time, you know, the one that asked, do you enjoy the latest hits? The first thing I thought was, I'm really scared. And then the second thing I thought was, what can I do to use this thing? I didn't bat an eye before I turned it on my friends. You know that, Dad? Mm. So like you I'm weren't saying, that good of a girl, Rosie, in that moment. <laughs> well, you weren't that good of a father either. No, you got me there. Well, that's life. It's all those uh, all these imperfections, all these problems. Yeah. And that's what's great about what Dr. Guru offers. In a good dream, you don't have to worry about any of those things. Yeah. Well, right thing. now, you don't even have to worry about waking up. Yeah, but this is the thing, Dad. I don't want peace. I don't want love despite all my hippie days. I want power. Hmm. You can see your dad is getting looking a little bit worried. All right. So, Jordan. Uh, right now, you're sitting down. Carl Sagan's next to you. And he's like, so, Jordan. When you told me there were aliens, I, you know, you know what I say. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. But my friend, you got that evidence. How'd you do it? Well, fake Carl Sagan, I don't actually have the evidence at the moment, but I'm getting ready to, right? It as soon as I get out of this illusion, you see. By the way, every single one of you in the audience, you are fake. You are <laughs> living a lie inside the dream of an eldritch god. And you don't even realize just how insignificant you are. You aren't even real people. 
<laughs> You're just illusions, including you, fake Carl Sagan. I am sorry to say, your life is meaningless, and I have had enough of the show. And Jordan gets up and just walks straight out of there if he can. <laughs> All right. I think... All right. Okay. I think um, because Jordan is able to, like, withstand this the most, he's the one that Sean appears first. So, Sean, that door in the priest's office opens up, and you can see into the studio with, like, Jordan standing up and, like, kind of trying to get out. Okay. Um... I had an idea. I was basically um, basically as soon as he stands up, all the lights and all the cameras shut off. Uh And then a a single light shines on myself. And you just see me applauding. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Is this using one of Charlie's powers? Yes. Ooh. All right. Technopathy. Ooh, awesome. All right, so by messing with these illusory electronics, I think that causes the dream to start breaking down a little bit. And when the lights like switch back on, uh, the room's empty. All the fake people, fake Johnny Carson, fake Carl Sagan are gone. Huh, knew it. <laughs> well done, Jordan. You want to get out of here? <sighs> and hopefully Rosie and Carl have been killed themselves or gotten killed by something uh rosie's probably fine carl is probably probably in la la land right now but just in case do we know where dr guru is unfortunately not at the anything. moment right now I, we just need to get everyone together everyone together yes okay so by oh. the way i've i now have charlie's powers for a little bit charlie's po- wait charlie is here yeah, but only I can see him right now. Sorry. And just by hearing that, Jordan grabs Sean and shakes him. Where is he? Where are you hiding him? I'll, Jordan, I'll... go ahead and roll grit. Let's we'll see if you can pierce the He veil. is literally the one thing I need to prove everything. <laughs> <laughs> and I rolled a seven. Um. Okay. You can see the outline of Charlie for like a couple couple seconds at a time, kind of flashing in and out. I can see him, but he's not really there. Ah. Yeah, sorry, man. Apparently, because of all the drugs I took, I've got like this weird like mental barrier slash connection to him now. So the secret is drugs. (laughs) Let's go after Carl first. And, uh, and Jordan just maybe not those drugs um and it's probably a long-term thing so but Charlie's like yeah I wouldn't really recommend becoming a psychonaut yeah uh, oh yeah Charlie says probably not a good idea to be a psychonaut and Jordan just looks down despondent so close and yet so far sorry man uh yeah but <sighs> Carl's probably the best one to do next he might I think I have an idea for that. Yeah. Okay, let's Rosie check in with Carl, and then we'll check with Rosie as well, I re- so she'll be safe. Yeah, Rose. Okay, so- oh, sorry, guys. Go, go ahead. I was kind of no, stepping sorry. over you a little bit. That's all right. All right. So we'll check in with Carl and Rosie. I know you're like you're trying to sort of work a con. Um, I think. Yeah, we hadn't gotten up to the part of like what she was gonna say to sell it, and then you cut away from it. I was like, oh no! Ah! Okay. We're going to pop back to see how that works out. Um, just kind of be aware that, like, while Braxis is sort of there, it's more like this is Dr. Guru's show. He's kind of, like, taken over Braxis. Though Braxis, maybe, you know, he's a really powerful being, so bits and pieces of him are probably there. What? I'm sorry, are you going back to me or are you going back to Carl first? It's fine. Let's check in, let's check in with Carl. I'm going to say... Sean and Jordan, you open up that that door, you know, to heads out of the studio, and you're back in Carl's apartments. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yeah, I just see Carl sitting there, and you're just like, yeah, looks like he's having the worst of it. He's even more baked than you are. <laughs> Actually, this is the clearest I've ever been in a while. 
Well, let's see if I can get some clarity with Carl, and I'm going to touch him and heal, and basically just get all of the all of the drugs out of him with the healing ability. Okay. It's gonna spend this is gonna one be more. a rude awakening. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm, guys, I'm gonna be like, burning through go, these. Um... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sean. I'm just burning through them. So I think we got okay. at least four left. Oh, and also like be aware, guys. Even though it's um, Sean is the one who can only who can see him, you guys are still like in control of Charlie. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, so you can still use his powers yourself. Mm -hmm. Everybody can. Uh, okay. So and Carl, you can have the ones that. Uh, Oswald had back in our earlier arc. Um, but yeah, Carl, like the, the high vanishes. It just sort of abruptly uh, goes away. Sorry for the rude awakening. Oh, uh, yeah, instant splitting headache, but then probably a uh, moment of yeah. clarity and thank you. Um, yeah, just kind of like wobble up a little bit. Um, Oh. What the hell is going on? Aliens. We're in a pocket dimension sort of connected to a Braxis, but not actually a Braxis. Uh, through whoa, 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 the... whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we'll go back. Where is Rosie? Then on the way, tell me what's going on. She's she's in her own world. Well, yeah, let's go head towards there. As I said, <laughs> aliens. Make it short. Make it simple. <laughs> No, excellent Alien. explanation, but yeah, you just... Good to know. Okay. Yeah. Um, then I won't <laughs> tell you about the alien that I can see. Anyways. I already told It's too late. Let's just go get Rosie. Yeah. All right. So, Rosie, we'll check back with you and your dad in your old living room. Playing sure, piano. So. so, picking up from where she said power... Mm -hmm. or I'm interested in power. Um, I was going to next note that as she's been playing this song, she's gradually been playing it more and more off kilter and kind of working in tritones. So that Ooh. it's kind of getting more and more dissonant and devilish sounding as she's playing yeah. sort of build to the it. And then she sound. just kind of like hits the day in the life chord. Um, which, I mean, if you know what that is, it's at the end of that song. It's just like a bow kind of thing. So I guess my question for whoever is in charge here. Do you really think that keeping me trapped in a dream is the best idea? Or do you think I can be useful for your goals? Hmm. I think you're going to have to roll charm. Yeah. That is a 13. Ooh, okay. I am willing to spend adversity tokens to bring it up to a success. Yes, I would say you can spend maybe uh, one or two and there'll be a, a solid success. All right, I will spend two. Yeah, it's like a, it's an absolute key success. Um, Okay, your dad looks at you again, and this time it's with, it's your dad's body, but Dr. Guru's face. Uh. His head is like, you know, bigger than your dad's head was, so it doesn't quite match the body. Very strange. And he's like, in Dr. Guru's voice, Rosie Walsh. That's been what I've been waiting to hear since you showed up at the Covey. I always knew you could be useful to us. Well, what can I say about Hale Abraxas? No, no, no. Hail, Dr. Guru. If he has, like, something like a ring, she'll kiss it. Okay. No, no, no. No need for any theatrics. We're... You're, you're like me. You don't need to... I don't need to uh, put on the razzle-dazzle right now, do I? I'd prefer you didn't. Absolutely. And he just like it just this goes away. Um you're still in the living room, but like the piano's gone, your dad's gone, you just have Dr. Guru there. Sorry about like, we're in the we're earlier. in the same business, you might say. So you do it with a three minute song, and I do it with a I give it people their entire lives. We bring happiness. 
Yeah. We let people forget their troubles. I mean, here's something that I learned is that the world's a rotten place, you know? And any being that's uh, trying to change it, I mean, ain't going to change it for the worse, is it? <laughs> well, that's always been my opinion. Now, Rosie, I'm afraid your friends, though, well, they've been pretty naughty. I gave them all, well, one of them I couldn't, he's been doing some sort of strange mental exercises that have, it's like boxing a black belt. I couldn't land a hit on him. The other two, I gave them some nice little dreams to slip into. And, well, they just don't realize it's their bedtime. And they're not going to sleep. Well, you know, first you don't succeed. And if the I big think problem, so. and if the big problem here, I'm guessing, is Sean. I mean, if you need me to take out that particular trash, I don't mind doing it. Oh, I'd really hate for that to happen. But if it's necessary, it can be done. Sure. But you gotta let them think that I'm with them. You know what I mean? Until the big showdown moment. I understand. All right. Bring them to me. I'll put all three of you in front of me. And then... We'll take care of them. The other two, I can tuck away and put them in some good dreams. I'll figure out something for them. What I've been able... I could do... Small-scale versions of this before. It really helped. But now, with Abraxas behind me, inside of me... Mm -hmm. I can create so much better dreams. So I'll take care of them. You take care of your friend, Sean. Got it. Okay. And uh, with that, Sean, you open the door. You and Carl come in. And you all enter uh, the living room there. And you see Rosie. Just as another door at the far end of the living room opens up. You're muted, Sean. So am I. So I am. <laughs> so how's it going, Rosie? Oh, I'm doing fine. You enjoy your time with your father? I mean, it wasn't really my dad. True. But it could have been something. Yeah. But it's okay. I got what I needed out of it. All right. Well. I'm guessing this is the way through. Probably. Charlie? Charlie's like, yeah. He's on the other side of that door, Jack. That's but uh, watch out. Old Dr. Guru has gone through some changes. Oh, I'm sure. Charlie, can I ask you something? Uh, you can like Sean kind of translate, but old Charlie here is he's like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let her let her ask. What's your question? Can you still uh, do the things you used to be able to do? And how? Sounds yes. good. Sean. Mm -hmm. I got something for you. Sure. Come closer. Okay. She whispers in his ear, like, trust me. And then she takes out her bowie knife and slits his throat. Whoa. Okay. All right. So Sean draws down is like bleeding out and dying. Wow. I would have thought she had done that 20 years ago, but okay. Better late <laughs> the rest than of us can go through the door. He needed to be taken care of. She like wipes off the blade on Sean, sticks it back in her boot and goes through the door. Okay. And actually like as you go through the door, everybody else, including Sean, who was like bleeding out his last, you don't have to move at all. The room changes. And instead you are in, um, you're back in the entrance. 
It's like you just came through. You can see the door, the open door leading out into the snow. Uh, there's just like this dark gray stone all over the place, forming these uh, interlocking cubes. And then you see this. He stood there the whole time. And then alcove you couldn't see, but is now revealed. Orin McIntosh has been transformed, becoming a part of the palace of Abraxas. His skin and muscle are fused with the stone. His eyeballs are made of dark oil, which run in rivers down his cheeks. It's mine, he slurs the words. All the power. This is this is better than anything. Better than ministering to some Jesus freak sluts in Santa Monica with mother. Or following some fakir around India. Or living in the goddamn woods. I can get all the worship I want. I can make anyone love me. He stares at you with his dead eyes. Go on. Go back to your dreams. I'll take you there. Living's cursed. Give yourself over to the enlightenment of oblivion. Where's Rosie in all this? Just a quick question. Uh, I would say you, Jordan, Carl, and Sean dying are all together in front of it. You're all like facing him as he's kind of looking down at you from this, uh, you know, the wall where, that he's like fused with. Have I proved myself to you, doctor? He's like, oh, You've done splendidly. May I approach? You all can. Jordan, Carl, I'm going to give you what I gave to all my followers down there. As I was saying, the enlightenment of oblivion. You stepped out of your dreams. I'll go ahead and put you back in them. Trust me, it's much better than the alternative. Okay, Rosie. So the thing Rosie's looking for is the Eye of Abraxas. Ooh, okay. And she's hoping to get close enough to him to get it. This is mm. like this is like the end game of everything she's doing. Okay, give me a brains roll. Okay. She's so stupid. It's okay. Oh, it's an eight, and it's on a D eight. Oh ah! wow! All right, that's cool. Explodes. Uh. I got 16 altogether on like one of her not very good dice. Oh man, okay. You catch a glimpse of it as he like opens his mouth. You can see the eye is like back there, like past his, uh, you know, his tongue. Kind of around okay. the, the uvula area, but you can see it. This is gonna be so gross. Um, Yeah, she's gonna kiss him. Oh, okay. Ugh. Man. And hopefully right. that distracts him enough that he doesn't notice the knife getting into his throat. Oh, I see. Like right behind where the eye is so she can pop it forward into her own mouth. Ooh, okay. I like it. Ooh, <laughs> so this is a gross. lot here. Give me a fight roll. Let's see if you can like get him through the throat with a knife. That is a 10. And I will spend two adversity tokens to bring it up to a 12. Okay. I would say that does it um, with a complication. So yeah, how, how does this be a complication? Like? Yeah. <laughs> a guy, a man who's become a god, and now you're smooching him and stabbing him at the same time. Yeah. All right, go ahead and, yeah, so how, how do you do this? So basically, like, while she's kissing him, it's a really open mouth, sloppy ass kiss. And at the oh, same time, it's bro, like, okay. this is so I mean, it's like than anything I could come up with. Like, I mean, anybody watching the movie would think that she's, like, totally gone over to his side and it's like, oh, this girl's twisted, mm -hmm. you know? And it's right there that she, like, stabs underneath and just, like, gets it in there and it's almost like shucking an oyster and just pushes that eyeball out so that she's got it in her teeth and she pulls away. And it's like, Charlie, now! Okay. <laughs> like, heal Sean. <laughs> All right, Charlie. Sean, Charlie's hands, like, rush down around your throat and just... Close up that hole before you lose too much blood. Oh, good, because I had no oh, idea God. what the hell I was doing. <laughs> so he has, he has three out of seven left. Um, Sean, you're a lot weaker. Like, you did lose a lot of blood, but you're definitely still alive, thankfully. Oh, that hurts. Dying hurts. <laughs> um, Rosie, as you pull away, like, 
Dr. Guru starts to like writhe. His uh his mortal form, this whole building like now isn't really being held down by much. And um his hands bulge out from the uh the wall. Now like way the hands are now going like way longer than they should be. They're multiply jointed, they're dripping this uh the gooey Abraxas like oil slick stuff. He starts trying to grab you, and he's like roaring. There's uh, blood and the black, the the tar spilling out of his uh, sliced throat there. And he's just like, "That was an women. Mouth. It's always women." And he is just trying to uh, rip you apart. Yeah, that makes sense. Um... Let's check in with Jordan and then Carl. So. Since Charlie just healed Sean, it's just going to check up on Sean a little bit. You're okay? Not bleeding anymore? Don't need to supply any bandages or anything? Not bleeding, a little dizzy. I mean, I just lost a lot of blood. But go. Do your thing. Right. Time for grenades. <laughs> yep. I'm going to try and throw it in a way that the explosion doesn't Clip Rosie. Well, it'd be a little hard. She's like right up close to him. You have to get Rosie out of there before you throw the grenade because he's like pulling her, you know, in kind of an evil embrace. And grenades have a pretty big blast radius from from what I understand. Um, if Not Rosie, being a grenade expert. Oh, go ahead, Rosie. If Rosie sees Jordan pull out the grenade, she just shouts to Jordan, like, just do it. Hey, Carl, want to reattempt to shoot the twig? You're going to have to persuade me because the minute that she slit his throat, he pulled his gun and was basically pointing it at Rosie because you just killed someone that you've been rocking around with. Um, and then he was basically just moving it back and forth to all of your heads and backing up slowly as he was doing that this whole entire time. Um, you just all pulled some crazy shit. Oh, so, you've done nothing um, wrong. <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're definitely like, you know, closer friends with them than that and i just got my mind taken over and so i'm backing up um if you want me to shoot something you're gonna have to persuade me that's all i can say because uh, right now i am okay oh there is also um the machine gun that rosie brought like it's kind of like leaning against one of the walls maybe she set it down somewhere but it's there too all right Ooh. i'll do do as jordan says everything is fine she she had her reasons. Just trust us if you want to get out of here. Besides, you're making a lot of assumptions that we're actually friends. <laughs> yeah, we haven't been friends for a while. Cool. But we're still able to work together. So really, this isn't the worst thing that's ever happened to us. Hang around us. You'll see far worse shit than this. And something you're just going to have to get used to, mate. Can't always keep running away from, you know, the big giant scary monster. Going to have to face your fear. As much as I've tried. <laughs> no one paid me for that. Um, so, uh, yeah, if I, I, I guess if I can, I'll pick up the, uh, the AK and uh, begin, begin blasting and... I'll do my best not to uh, not to hit anything. Ooh, okay. Give me a fight roll. Plus, if you do hit somebody, we always have Charlie to heal them, so don't worry about it. Well, yeah. you, you guys have uh, so far three out of seven psychic energy tokens. Uh, Carl, how'd you do the fight? Well, my my twenty is not good tonight. That's a six, but I'm gonna use two adversity because that's what I got. Mm -hmm. So that's an eight. Okay. Um, all right. So I would say the good news is that you do free Rosie, but the bad news is this gun is something will happen to it to make sure the gun. Um, ooh, Sean's another good idea. Okay. The gun will not, will no longer work. Rosie drops like right below um, the wall based Dr. Guru. I would say, Carl, maybe you use up like all the bullets in the magazine and only had the one. <laughs> So it is now out of ammunition. 
But Rosie is now free. And now time for grenades. And I have right. the eye. I think, oh, what's that, Rosie? I said, and I have the eye. Yes, right. you have the eye in your, between your teeth. And I think Sean's thing he wanted to do. Go ahead, Sean. Yeah, I wanted to, basically, as the grenade is being lobbed, I want to um, basically have Charlie use his telekinesis to just sort of move her away from the blast and sort of back to where we are. Okay, absolutely. Um, so you have two out of seven psychic energy tokens left. Mm -hmm. uh, Charlie, like, you reach out your hands as Charlie does, and... Rosie is like wished, whisked, <laughs> whooshed back over the, the flagstones of this strange palace and slides safely out of the reach That's of, uh, of the blast. Jordan, you want to throw the grenade there? Oh, oh, sorry, go ahead, Sean. Definitely. No, it's just sort of, it's too bad I won't be able to do this for very much longer. <laughs> okay, Jordan. All right. And I'm going to throw it and hopefully it lands right in his big mouth. All right, well, go ahead and roll fight. Not, I mean, it's not too hard to chuck a grenade at something, but let's see, you want that mouth. If you want, what am I saying? <laughs> if you want to get that that bullseye in the mouth. It's a 10. Ooh, okay, that does it. Yeah. Nice. You hurl it, mouth bullseye. He's like opening up to say something more and the grenade goes right in there. And then um, it cooks off, it explodes. His whole body is just like torn to pieces, splattered over the uh, the walls, and then the whole um, the whole palace castle starts coming down. Those cubic stones start like popping out of their uh, the walls and the ceiling and just plopping onto the ground and crashing to pieces. Well, he wanted his mind to expand. <laughs> Nice. Oh. Uh, we should probably figure out a way to get out of here. <laughs> back, back the way we came. Which is the way we came? Okay, you can't see the exit. The it's door. a little bit far away, or it's I mean not too far, but distance is strange here. Uh, someone's gonna have to roll flight to like guide you there. I could do that. I've got a d20 in it. <laughs> okay, I've go ahead got and roll a flight. D4. Well, a d6. I'm okay with the guy with the d20 rolling. Yeah. yeah, not too hard, but you may take some injuries. Okay, uh, it's not not the best, not the worst. It's an eleven. Hmm. All right, I, mean, I would say get out. Good. True. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think that's okay. You guys make it out. You get out of the snow, um, and then as soon as you get out and you turn around and look back, it is gone. Just uh, just vanished. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Sorry about uh, slitting your throat there, Sean. It's just the only way he's going to trust me is if I killed you. I probably deserve that. Uh, really didn't. That was kind of mean. I mean, I mean, if I if I hinted at anything too much, he wouldn't have trusted me, and then I couldn't have gotten close enough to get this from him. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> uh, 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 uh. I swallowed a lot of Abraxas. Ugh. That's something I would not want to happen. Anyways, um, I really wish Charlie's... there was a way that we could destroy that eye. Hmm. Charlie's like, well, I wish it was that easy. In the meantime, you got some people to save. You guys better, you better get back to that uh, that campsite. Mm -hmm. Hey, Charlie. Oh, yeah. If the if the eye hasn't can't be destroyed, what can be done with it? I would say. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know if I can hear Charlie. Never mind. Well, can, I'll, I mean, I'll Charlie translate. can hear you. Yeah. He can talk to Sean. Yeah, I can translate. Yeah. yeah. So they would say, uh, "Keep it safe. Keep it somewhere safe." Oh, great! We have to keep it on hand. Is there a way? The best we can do. Is there a way we could use the eye to destroy itself? Doesn't really work that way. It's not exactly a magic lamp, buddy. Nah, mm. man. All right. Well, well let's... we got to get back to the camp regardless. Yeah, we'll let's... figure out what to do with the eye later. All right. Let's... So, you guys hurry back to the camp. Uh, everybody is out of their stupors. The guy that Carl shot 
through the face is like screaming and wailing on the ground and the people are trying to um you know kind of bandage him everyone's freaking out i think as you guys emerge some of the hawks like start raising their rifles at you and uh bud heller is like no no don't stop and they you know they lowered their guns they need dr guru's command before they're going to do anything uh oh. rosie's gonna hold up the eye um bud's like remember most, most of the cubby doesn't quite know about this side of it oh do they not understand any of that no. No, he was. They were kind of more. I mean, that was kind of a Doctor Guru project. He kind of kept that mm-hmm. to himself, I think. Though I think Buddy would, Bud Heller would recognize it for sure. Well, it's just to hold up the eye, then. Okay, he's like, "What? You got that?" Listen, you all don't have very much time. While you were all in that little stupor, the cops threatened to drop bombs on all of you. You've got about three seconds to live, so get out of this place. In fact, you guys do see that helicopter with the uh, the bomb package buzzing its way overhead Can and i, I don't advise bringing any weapons with you unless you want to do suicide by cop okay rosie i think you're gonna have to roll a charm because these are yes, like kind of brainwashed people sure uh i've got a seven Ooh. okay it's not okay. a great role for her all right yeah. i think most of the people like some, some maybe like a two-thirds of them the ones who were like probably already on the verge of leaving like um janie and her friends, they start like dashing through the safety of the woods. Uh, but a lot of the others like look over to, you know, their their Messiah, Bablo, and be like, what do we do, master? And he just starts like crying and be like, I, I don't know. Just get. Oh, sorry, Sean, you got sorry. cut off. Yeah, I did. Just get out. Don't worry about the kid. I'll take care of him. Just go. All right, Sean, you might need to roll some charm there. Yeah. You're, you're kind of like addressing the crowd? Yeah. Okay. Ten. Mm, okay. I think with that, pretty much all of them are heading off, except for like the diehards and, of course, this poor kid. Yeah. I figure Rosie's leading out that first group of people already, so from here on out, she's kind of out of the scene. Yeah. Right. You cut your way through the hood, through the, through the woods. Everybody else is still kind of back there in the cubby. All right. So I think I will just sort of grab the kid and just be like, it's all right, kid. Let's just get out of here. All right. Um, the helicopter's buzzing like pretty low, and you can see like inside the people kick out the explosives. Carl, Jordan, what are you guys doing? Yeah. Go ahead, Dallas. Um, so helicopter's on its way in, and they're already ready to drop the payload or... yeah they're like kicking it out right now like just as the people are starting to escape oh god um the best i can possibly think of is to shoot the helicopter while yelling at them to possibly do something that i can't do because i've seen some shit pulled off today so um mm, okay uh, that's all i can say is like you know i'm i'm I wrote like this guy very simple. Fire That's it. Helicopter. <laughs> yeah, like I'm, I'm going for, uh, you know, a cockpit to make the the pilot swerve and get out of there because if anybody wants to save their life, um, which might make the rest of them fall out or fall over or whatever. Ooh, yeah. Okay, I like that. Kind of buying some time. That's the best thing I can think of. I don't know okay. how else to stop a helicopter with bombs with everyone else around. They're not going to listen to me. All right, go ahead and roll fight. I think I saw Rosie's hand up. That's an 18. That's a finally a good roll. Ooh, excellent. Mm. All right, so how does this look like as you're like, um, you know, not shooting a helicopter down, but like definitely no. like making it pause and kind of buzz buzz away a little bit? Uh, kind of just like, if you got any great last ideas, this is the moment. And then just, you know, square up both hands. I'll do the uh, <clears throat> um, uh, Murtaugh rigs. You know, crack the neck, spin it around a bit, and bang. All right. The helicopter starts like you like the you hear that ping of metal over even over the rotors. It starts spinning away. All right, now I think there's a plan to help deal with the helicopter a little bit too, Rosie. Yeah, I was gonna mention, doesn't Charlie have the ability to control technology? Yep. He does. And you have you only have what do you have left? You have two left. 
I was going to suggest that the ability to control technology to, I, I don't know how the bombs are getting dropped from the helicopter. Is it people literally throwing bombs out of it or is there a... Yeah, I think they're just, they're just tossing them out. They're just tossing them out. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that like maybe Charlie could use their technology to just make the helicopter totally malfunction and crash. Ooh, okay. All right, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll make it... To... Yep. Okay, so we'll spend the point there. You have one left. I mean, if that's what people want, don't. No, listen. yeah. Like, my idea was basically just to have the bombs not never hit the ground. So, and my idea was to just throw a tree at the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a cool idea too. <laughs> um, but we think we're I think we're going with uh making the helicopter just come down. Whatever. All right, you hear like those helicopter alarms start going on and start spinning around. Maybe they think it's because of like the pistol shots, but it spins over and like drops. Um, not not hard enough for it to blow up, but it lands really hard in the middle of this uh, encampment. Uh, by now, you hear a lot of like sirens and shouting, and you see that like all of the the doves have now met the police. Who are starting to like search them, um, kind of push them aside. They've got some paddy wagons over there in the snow, and they're shoving everybody in. So everybody kind of reconvenes in this uh, this police barricade there, where they're like hauling everybody away. You see, unfortunately, Officer or Captain Frankowski is there, and he like glares at you as you four emerge. Also, uh, the mayor is there, like Mayor Orsini, wearing like a big fancy camel hair coat and like a big fur, fur you know, hat is sort of overseeing things. And you can definitely see Frankowski is like giving you guys a stink eye as you emerge from the woods. Uh, Jordan. So the mayor is there. Yes. And it was the mayor again. Uh, his name is Mayor, uh, I think, Bob Orsini. Mm -hmm. He's a pretty bad mayor. <laughs> he was, like, kind of behind that, you know, some of these nasty crackdowns. He's doing this whole thing to save face. Uh, of course. But perhaps we can use that. Mm. So, gonna go up to the mayor real quick. Okay, and you can see, like, Frankowski is going, like, right next to him, looking like he really wants to do some damage to you. But, but yeah, go ahead, Jordan. Now, I know this looks very bad. You all say it looks bad. Who are you? Uh, Jordan Mays, uh, head of a local talk show. You may have heard of me. Uh, yeah, I think I saw you. Mark with Carl Sagan. Yeah. Right. You don't yeah, you're on there with like Captain Kangaroo. Am I right? <laughs> Eh, his name is Captain Marsupial, and no, we are never inviting him to the show again. Thank you very much. But the point is, I think we can help each other out here. Help everyone out. You uh -huh. really... Oh, wait a minute. And, like, Frankowski's like, don't listen to this. And Orsini just holds up a hand. He's like, I'm listening. Now, these innocent people over here, what exactly have they done? Seems to me they've been scammed by a very charismatic guy who used them for his own gain. And now you have your own police chief getting ready to bomb them for no reason. The police using explosives against innocent civilians. Now that would be a shame, wouldn't it? And I pass the mayor every photograph I've taken of that helicopter trying to drop bombs on the complex. Whoa. Okay, going for like a, a blackmail? Oh, yes. Mm, all right. I think you have to roll a charm. Maybe not a huge one, though. <laughs> charm for me is D10. Exploding. Whoa. Okay. Exploding. Oh, oh my. Whoa. A double explosion. And a four. So 24 altogether. <laughs> whoa. Okay. The mayor is like to totally buys this. He's like, uh, well, you know, sometimes things just look like they don't in the heat of the the moment. Uh, 
look, what what do you want? I'll do anything. Just don't give those pictures to the press. Whatever you want. You want your own office in City Hall? You want a, a city grant? You got it. You just got to ask. For it. None of those things. Let those people go. Throw this guy in jail for terrorism. And, well, it depends. What the rest of you want? Well, I'll tell you this right now, Marosini. This is one of the first times ever that a cult has managed to be um, taken care of without mass violence and death. As far as I can tell, only their leader died and one guy got shot in the face. That's a pretty big win as far as these cult situations go. I bet you could spin that pretty good for yourself if, you know, you had ambitions in politics beyond just being a mayor, governor. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Maybe our first Italian-American president. Oh, don't even, don't even, uh, don't even, you, you know, you know what my, how my heart's beaten. But, uh, yeah, I like the way you think. I got and a publicist for, uh, who can work with you. Yeah. And as for you, Frankowski, I'm shocked to know that you've been taking bribes, running your uh, your organization turf like your own private band of thieves, and this lawlessness must end. Yes, just shocked. <laughs> like you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> You, my friend, have a date with internal affairs. And in a bold new era, New Hookton's going to come to pass. And uh, Frankowski, like, the cuffs are thrown on him uh, by his fellow officers. And uh, you you know there's, there's going to be some... Um, what am I thinking of? You you know there's going to be some, uh, some big trial where he's going to be like, uh, s s singing like a canary and giving them all away pretty soon, if he even survives that far. Right. Yeah. As he's being carted away, I'm just waving. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so the rest of the cult, like, I mean, the the wagons are not arresting them, but they can at least give them a ride into town. So as they're all sort of uh, going in, not being cuffed anymore. But you know, being 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 treated, um, Bud goes over to you guys and he's like, "Well, maybe I shouldn't have invited you all back, or I guess, judging by what happens or what would happen if you weren't here, I'm I'm glad I did, and I'm glad you were along too, Mister Harris." Yeah, uh, you know, do what you can, right? Yeah, you guys saved a lot of lives today, including my own. But now, I gotta ask you, what the hell do I do now? That is up to you, my friend. I mean, you were doing okay. I mean, maybe just find a new path. Hmm. Maybe try to not follow people that are trying to end the world next time, bud. I'll keep that in mind. Would you like to come on my talk show and, you know, expose the truth of everything? Hmm. I wouldn't mind that. Okay. I can see myself having a future in television. Could be interesting. Hmm. Please, by all means, expose everything leave no <laughs> detail unturned well i do like the sound of that all right and with that you guys return to uh i think you guys took a car out here yep it was uh rosie's car as a matter of fact or alfa romeo <laughs> yes you guys can pile in you drive through the snow and you get back to new hooked in on christmas morning just as the sun is rising over all those decorations. And uh, for this once, the city is at peace. And I think that is where we're going to bring, except for one more thing, because we got to know what happens to your characters in the future. Mm -hmm. but that is where we're going to bring the, the narrative part, the, the, the RPG role play part of this episode to a close. Can I, um, can I have one thing happen before we go to the flash to the future? Oh, yes, please. Uh, I like the idea of Rosie going to her mom's place and she's just covered in all this sliming goo and combat 
paint and just looking real rough and coming through the door and being like, Ma, we're going to California today. <laughs> Rosie, it's Christmas. Do I look like I'm messing around? <laughs> I think she'll have to go with you, given given how you look. All right, so that will bring this uh, this arc to a close. And let me let's figure out what do we think happens to our characters after after this adventure. What do they go on to do for the rest of their maybe not, maybe not the entire rest of their lives, but. Uh, what do you think happens next to them? Oh, Rosie does still have the eye, yes. We can kind of check in what happens with that, because while I think we're done playing these characters, they may come back into the game in one way or another. Uh, maybe it's just they're throwing on the latest uh, the latest hits, Rosie Walsh's album, in, uh, in another game. But we'll we'll see. Let's start with, maybe we'll go the opposite way. So we'll start with uh, with Dallas. So, what happens to Carl Harris after this uh, horrifying experience? Um, well, Carl uh, checks back in with Rashid X, lets him know exactly what happens, uh, um, you know, where the eye is and everything, because uh, um, that's his. So, he needs to know where it is. And he can go get it from Rosie if he wants to. But I'm out. I'm done. And... Um, you hired me for something that uh, I fulfilled on my end, it was, as far as I can tell. So I'm gonna head back to New York. Whoa. Uh, do you think he continues like his work as a criminal enforcer, or does he go straight? No, he tells he tells Frank that uh, he's uh, he's seen his bullet. And if he keeps going, you know, um, he's gonna get it real soon. So he uh, he goes as clean as soon as he possibly can because he realizes from that dream that he had, he'll never be able to go back to that feeling, not once ever again. And it's only just bad from there. Um, plus, it's Christmas, you know, this moment, he's having all these realizations, right? I'm just saying, like, you know, future. Um, yeah. He's like, first thing on his mind now that he's clear is his kid. So um, he's going to go try to uh, start making amends on all that, too. Mm, I like that. So Carl, has to... for him, he actually, bizarrely, this ended up being like a positive experience, kind of helped him uh, turn things around. Yeah, well, if he didn't quit what he does, his his family never, like, especially his, his kid never would have, like, agreed to speak to him again because he's a hired killer. So, oh, yeah. Um, so he had to give that up, but uh, it all had to be given up. You know what I mean? It was like an all or nothing kind of deal. Mm. All right, very cool. Uh, how about Rosie? Well, Rosie obviously moves back to, you know, California with her mom and, you know, uh, in the divorce settlement, she gets the mansion, but she's still in a band with her husband. So they, you know, constantly are together despite not being married anymore. Uh, you know, they keep releasing albums. She lets her husband be in control of the next album and it ends up being this very weird concept piece called Horn, which does not sell anywhere near <laughs> as well as Whispers. Uh, and then they let Rosie have more control of the music again after that. Um, but in terms of like things besides her pop career, um she does like pay a good amount of money to have people study this eye uh and she also encases it um in like a a clear polymer like sort of paperweight thing mm -hmm. uh, that she often puts on her piano and the eyes has been put inside of it to look at her and almost nightly she plays dream a little dream to the eye while like yeah. looking straight at it. Wow, very cool. And she gets increasingly weirdly neurotically obsessed with it, but nobody really knows because to all intents and purposes, she's just this pop star, but she brings the eye with her everywhere. She never has it very far away. Hmm, okay. Yeah, it makes, makes sense, makes sense. 
All right. Uh, I, I do love that future for Rosie. Yeah. How about she thinks, uh, she thinks she's saving the world, whether or not she actually is. Who knows? But she thinks she's playing lullabies to a monster that wants to destroy the planet. No, she's keeping it safe for sure. Yeah. All right. Let's check in with uh, what about Jordan? What happens? Does uh, that talk show continue? Do we get some uh, some fame? What happens? Well, after trying and failing to convince Sean to get uh, Charlie on the show, you know, to do a bit. And I kind of realized that wasn't going to work out anyways. Who realizes what an <laughs> alien actually looks like? Whatever. Uh, Jordan's going to continue doing the show for a little bit until he realizes he's not going to make much headway with actually convincing people all these things actually exist. So instead... He's going to do his best to create a repository. Uh, basically, kind of a library of all the weird things that have been going on. All the aliens, the Braxis, all the supernatural things, the plants attacking, all of that. Basically mm. becoming the Alistair Crawley of his generation. Even hiring a teenage assistant in 1985 to help him out. Oh, I like it. Maybe kind of a hint at a future character? Hey. Oh man, I, I love that Jordan Mays is becoming the the Doc Brown to uh to some to a future a future Marty, perhaps, mm -hmm. a similar kind of bizarre b bizarre friendship of a high schooler and a kooky scientist, like in that great movie. Except I was right about everything. <laughs> Ooh, I can't wait to see more. All right, and then finally, what happens to Sean Hackett? Um, Sean, um, Sean sort of cleans up. Um, he actually like ends up writing a book about his experiences and he tries to do it as like, sort of like a straight piece, but that doesn't work. So then he turns it into a, a fiction and just tries to do it as sort of like a series of of sci-fi novels <laughs> whoa um, really cool and Maybe so, like it then inspires him to become the next uh i don't know like frank herbert maybe with some mm -hmm. crazy mind-blowing sci-fi yeah and every once in a while he hopes to to hear from charlie again so <laughs> who knows if he does all right. Well, he might. Charlie is going, you know, safely back to his home dimension. So uh, just to double check now, now in our band or in our group, we have a uh, fake Carol King slash Stevie Nicks, uh, fake, uh, fake Carl Sagan, uh, fake <laughs> Gary Gygax, and now fake <laughs> uh more or less but i, I kind of like that you know <laughs> i like we, we become we become movers and shakers in the world uh but next time we'll be playing all new characters and we'll be kids young people though you can be an adult too if you want and then like it could be an interesting twist and then you know be their descendant or something when we get to the modern age we only have six episodes left two more arcs and that'll be it for strange generations which I think it's turned out really well, and I really want to thank you guys. Like, you're 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 making this work, and I can't wait to see what we come up with next. Mm -hmm. Seriously, like, Cat, I'm so happy that you mentioned you called it all out because <laughs> I've had some favorite characters on all these shows, but this is my favorite like mix of all four of you at the <laughs> same time. You know, sometimes I have a couple people, and it always switches, but all four of you at the same time this time, your characters are just like. Yes, this this is something I would watch in a movie. I'd read a book about this. This is this is great. Um, so I'm really appreciating that you called that out. I was like, and especially that you made the mistake of saying it was a band. It's always a band. It's the <laughs> 70s. Everybody's in a band. Let's be real, especially if there's a cult involved. You're in a band. <laughs> so, no, I really appreciate. It. I was like, I was gonna mention how much this this mix of characters is like seriously my favorite. Uh, just. <laughs> all four of you at the same time are all perfect for me. Um, so thanks guys. This is awesome. Uh, we're going to do, keep going. Uh, as Michael said, we're going to have a couple more arcs uh, here, a couple more series mm -hmm. here, 
yep, two more. And yeah, I'm really, I love this system. I'm, this is one of our, my favorite systems too, that, that I've watched played. So I'm going to have to play it myself one of these days. It's you know? an especially good feeling when the dice explodes. Yeah. Sure. That, that oh, kind of I moment. A few times tonight. Yeah. Those yeah. Are, it's yeah. a weird moment, but it's like, so I get to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, things could have gone very differently on that spotting the eye of a Braxis thing. And like, you know, it was mm-hmm. my D8 that exploded, you know? Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, so good. So thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the raid again there, Marine of One. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in, everybody out there. So we will see you next week. But until then, make sure and pull up a chair. And make, and make time, time to tabletop. To table yeah. Make time to tabletop. I was muted. <laughs> oh, no. It's even better. We could do it in round. <laughs> so thanks, everyone. We will see you very soon. Good night, everybody.